From the Ron Paul Institute for Peace and Prosperity, new Libertarian presidential candidate has 10-minute MSNBC interview about why he is running, says nothing Libertarian. Now, this is from Adam Dick, a writer for the Ron Paul Institute, not from Ron Paul himself. Does Ron Paul personally endorse everything said on his website? Yeah, of course. But it's kind of interesting to see this division here because we now have two seriously, well, at least one serious, one semi-serious. And I say semi-serious with Jacob Hornberger because he really has no following outside of the libertarian movement. He has raised uh, not a competitive amount of money. He has not built any significant social media following. And I I've said this in debate. It's kind of a fan, it's a fantasy. No, it's a straight up, and, and libertarians, we, we indulge in lots of things. But it's a fantasy to think that a candidate whose message has been a failure for 30 years or, or only a very minor success, hasn't got them any national name ID, hasn't gotten them any major media, hasn't built them a significant mailing list or email list or social media following. Well, if we give them the nominee, uh, we let them be the nominee or give them the nomination, suddenly their message is going to work. No, bullshit. So I, I, I want to say that there, by that uh, you know, criteria, there really only are, what, four of us who are serious? By, by this dimension, we have five. We'll say five, because uh, I want to include John Mons here, who doesn't have any of the criteria that I mentioned, but he has one thing outside of that, which is that he has gotten over a million votes as a libertarian, as a successful gubernatorial candidate in Georgia, ran a great campaign, did really well. So I would include John Mons in this, but it's me, John McAfee, Berman Supreme, and Justin Amon. Am I missing anybody? I don't want to miss, I have the list here, we'll get to this. I don't want anybody to feel left out or discount anybody else. But if you nominate anybody other than one of those candidates, you're not just taking on the general libertarian long shot, you're, you're really praying for a miracle that suddenly a, a messenger whose message has failed to get any kind of traction, any kind of significant appeal is suddenly going to work. Now, there, there are two, two little exceptions. Well, one little exception is I'll, I'll say with Dan Berman, I'll come back to. Um, and in, in his case, I'll just say, although he's been running for uh, a significant period of time, I think about a about a year now, I forget when Dan jumped in exactly. And he has built a following just as a candidate. Coming from no following to a following as a candidate suggests that yeah, he's got a message that works that could, could amp up. But if you're saying, hey, I've been an activist for 30 years or 20 years and, and, and I've been fighting for freedom this whole time, well, your shit's not working. Why do you think it's suddenly gonna work if you get the nomination? Why, does, why would anybody support someone based on that fantasy? Well, in the case of Jacob Hornberger, is that he's the next Ron Paul. We see the Mises Caucus even going, like using the, the Loveolution logo. Uh, yeah, which my friend Ernie Hancock came up with and in order to do the, the grassroots uh, spray paint and stencil Tyvek signs that were so famous during the Ron Paul campaign. Um, but there are two candidates vying to be the next Ron Paul. Some people have accused me of this. I'm not trying to be the next Ron Paul. No way. I get it. I, I, I did veterans for Ron Paul. I was a supporter of his in 2008 and 2012 and, and, and was pretty involved as, as, as a grassroots supporter and you know ran for Congress and was endorsed by Ron. And back then, people were saying, oh, yeah, you're going to be the next Ron Paul. And back then, yeah, maybe a little bit more when I was going the Republican congressional route, but no, one cycle was enough for me to realize the Republican Party is a losing strategy for freedom any way you cut it. And uh, I don't think that you will have another Ron Paul ever in human history. You will never have another Ron Paul moment again in human history. As the Ron Paul campaigns both represented libertarian moments, as in surges of belief, uh, surges of research, surges of, of people signing up and, and, and engaging in libertarian thought in so many different ways. Uh, yeah, we should have, or we're going we're gonna, we're gonna to need a few more libertarian moments before we, uh, 
before, before we phase out this government thing entirely, but you're not going to do it with the same formula because the times have changed. If Ron Paul ran again right now, even, um, and, and I hope he does, but I, I don't think he, his health is up to it, unfortunately. He's 77 now, 78? I mean, he's, he's up there. He's definitely over 70. Um, and being a 70-plus-year-old white dude against the old parties, two 70-plus-year-old white dudes, uh, not great optics for the party. Also a problem with Hornberg. I believe he's, is he? How old is Hornberger? I don't know. Doesn't no, matter. Um, but you have you have a Mosh and Hornberger vying to be the next Ron Paul, and then you have the Ron Paul Institute here come out against a Mosh like this. And I wonder, like, is Ron Paul going to endorse? Uh, would he endorse a libertarian? I mean, last cycle he didn't endorse anybody except his son Rand, and that's kind of his deal, right? To help his son play the Republican game which is obviously, a, even in Rand's case, a very losing battle. Um, it's kind of sad that Ron Paul has been, you know, allowed himself, chosen to be pushed into silence on this. And after hearing Ron Paul's thoughts evolve recently, hearing him speak at Anarchapulco a few years ago, excuse me, was it, was it, it was two years ago, he gave a speech there where he said, we should get government eventually down to nothing. Wow, Ron Paul isn't just a volunteer. Ron Paul is more of an anarchist than I am. Yeah. I have never, as a candidate, I've, sometimes in the past, said, yes, we get rid of government entirely, get it down to nothing. But when it comes to serious policy and, 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 and my more reasoned, mature position as a voluntarist, I, I, yeah, you want a voluntary thing that you call government? I'm all for it. Ron Paul says, get government down to nothing. He's going more anarchist. And I wonder if he would then support getting the federal government down to nothing. I'd love to have the endorsement of Ron Paul in this race, of course. Or of the Ron Paul, well, I guess the Institute legally can't. Uh, or to, but, but to have the support of the Ron Paul Institute, to have, to have I mean, there. so the Ron Paul Institute, here's an important point here. They went out of their way with this story to criticize Amash's first media appearance as a presidential candidate libertarian for saying nothing libertarian on mainstream media. I've done a handful of mainstream media appearances since announcing my campaign. They've never covered me. I, I, I mean, even to have just fair criticism. If the Ron Paul Institute uh, or, or Ron Paul himself or any of the writers there or, or uh, Mr. Adams with, with his role there, my friend, uh, you know, they want to criticize me. I'd love to have just the, the respect that they give a homage to be subject to the same intellectual criticism. Which goes something like this. After Representative Justin Amash, Independent Michigan, um, and now it should technically read L. Michigan. He is, he is now, and you hear people say that he's the, the first libertarian in Congress. Technically, he's the second. When Ron Paul was in Congress, he was a registered member of the Libertarian Party and a lifetime member of the Libertarian Party who happened to be affiliated Republican as a member of Congress and electorally. So Ron Paul was the first libertarian in Congress. Justin Amash is the first officially affiliated as a sitting congressman member of Congress, which is great. And I, I don't mean to discount that. That is huge for the Libertarian Party. But when you hear people dishonestly blowing him up, saying he's the most libertarian, you know, I'm, I actually gave him more credit than I thought he deserved. Because in this one, well, we'll get into this interview, but I'm hearing all sorts of anti-freedom things that he supported in the past where you go, oh, he wasn't, he wasn't even halfway as good as Dr. No was as a member of Congress. That was Ron Paul's nickname because he basically voted no for everything. Uh, after Amash established a committee this week to enable him to run for the Libertarian Party presidential nomination, he was interviewed for 10 minutes at MSNBC regarding his candidacy. Did Amash use this time to advocate for accomplishing libertarian goals, terminating the drug war, ceasing foreign intervention? and ending the Federal Reserve, for example? No, instead, Amash repeatedly avoided talking about any particular policy issues. Then, when asked by host Ayman Moyeldin to weigh in on government actions taken purportedly in response to coronavirus, I, lo I got, you know what, I, I, I have to say to Adam here, Adam Dick, um, this is great language. 
purportedly in response to coronavirus. Amash even managed to address this matter that involves incredible rights violations and vast spending in such a non-libertarian manner that Moyldon soundly challenged Amash for supporting big government, the opposite of advocating a libertarian position. Is this who you want as your nominee? Really? You want someone you're going to have to apologize for? You're not, not just, oh, he's got this random vote in his past we didn't like. No, right now, he goes on national TV and is defending big government. And you as a libertarian have to go, oh, please vote libertarian. We're the party of smaller government, except for our presidential nominee. He's sort of for small government. And the, real, is that what you want to have to explain away? Frankly, that applies to almost every other libertarian party primary presidential candidate especially Judge Jim Gray, uh, but but really any of them who are running to be president. I will say about Judge Gray, again, the does it work factor. And I like Jim personally, nice guy. Um, and we're friendly. And, and we generally support each other as friendly colleagues. I have a good working relationship with Jim Gray. Again, him as the nominee, trustworthily anti-war, no doubt. But he was the nominee for vice president in 2012. What has he done with that title since then? Now, I will say to his credit, he's actually done a reasonable amount. And he's been a good judge by certainly government standards. But has he had any kind of success at the level you would want in a presidential nominee of just having an effective message that reaches people, having a following? No, nothing. Insignificant. So. In response to queries from Moyldin regarding Amash's interest in seeking the Libertarian Party presidential nomination, Amash repeatedly avoided advancing libertarian ideas. Instead, Amash repeatedly sought to promote himself via comments that could be used by a candidate with any political views whatsoever. Here are three examples. Quote, what people want is someone who's practical, who's honest, who will represent every American. Now, think, think I, I don't have a problem with him saying that. And if you're pointing out the dishonesty of the other candidates, you're a real alternative. Hey, Trump is a fucking liar. Biden is a fucking liar. What people want is someone who's practical, honest, and will represent every American. Okay, now it makes sense. But when you're just throwing this out as a talking point, hey, you get one soundbite on mainstream media. Is this really what you want representing the Libertarian Party? Or someone who has, like myself, a very consistent track record of in every interview, making sure that libertarian principles shine through. Quote, people want someone who's going to be practical, who will bring real, honest ideas to the table. We need people who have leadership skills, who can stand up against those in power, and stand up to those who want to continue the bad process we have in Congress. And I have those skills, and I'll bring those to the table. I, uh, no, Justin, I think what you have proven is that you have political skills, not leadership skills. Can stand up to those in power? Well, no, you did some political posturing around impeachment. Is that standing up? Not when you knew you were going to lose your congressional seat anyway. No, it sounds like pandering, posturing, and opportunism to me. Real, honest ideas to the table? Does it matter if legislation doesn't get passed? If nothing significantly changes? If the federal Leviathan continues under this illegal constitution? Or that Amash would be president with a Republican and Democrat Congress who would not allow him to really get anything done outside the immediate power of the presidency, which is significant. There is nothing promoting libertarian ideas in any of this. Indeed, presumptive Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump and presumptive Democrat presidential nominee Joe Biden could just have well said all of this. Also, Amash, several times in the interview, said people should have a choice on their ballots in addition to Trump and Biden. Okay. But what policy changes does Amash advocate that give people a reason to support him? He does not say. Now, about this, I wrote a, a post today on Facebook because I have been hearing about this. I heard from a lot of my supporters who like Justin Amash that we can't have him at the top of the ticket so that we don't get painted as the party of washed up Republicans if we nominate one for the fourth cycle in a row. But they are, like me, very excited to have him in the party and have our second libertarian member in Congress ever. Uh, some want him to put time in with the party before running for president, or at least get elected to Congress as a libertarian first. More than a few people have said that they would want him to be my running mate. How cool would that be? Now, this is the, the last time this came up was when Cynthia McKinney was, uh, you know, in, involved in a way where she was getting ready to be my running mate, former 
Democrat, six-term Congresswoman, Green Party presidential nominee, now Libertarian, that would have been awesome. And it elevates you know, my nebulous resume of civil disobedience and media production and social media and being an author and publisher and merch guy and, and, and all of that to, well, and by the way, I'd rather have my life than have been a congressman for one term. No questions asked. But to have a mosh, to have that as my running mate, that resume, that, that credibility behind the platform of dissolving the federal government would be amazing. The problem is, can a mosh take the principled libertarian position? And that doesn't necessarily mean dissolve the federal government exactly the way I'm suggesting, but it does at least mean transition it in a meaningful way towards being a voluntary institution rather than a coercive, involuntary one. Remember, it's all about consent. If you don't have consent, you're doing something wrong. And, or, I don't know, maybe that's a little broad in language. If you're forcing something on someone without their consent, you're doing something wrong. So, I don't know, does anybody watch it? You guys want to see a, a Kokesh Amash ticket? I would love to see that. And, and, and Justin, if you ever end up watching this, I know that you haven't put forth a platform yet. And, and you know, you haven't even, and, and, and I, I, I do mean this as a way of, of being critical that you, you did come out in this MSNBC interview and say nothing about policy or positions or freedom or, or libertarian philosophy or ideals. So you still have the you know, political wiggle room to say, well, I'm, you know what, I, I love the Libertarian Party. And see, this is what I think Chafee should have done too. You know, to lend us the, the resume and the credibility and say, you know what, I'm, I'm humble enough to know that I shouldn't be setting the direction for the party. And I'm humble enough to know that nominating me, Justin Amash, as the washed up Republican for the fourth cycle in a row would doom the Libertarian Party to decades of irrelevancy. So I'm gonna run for the VP nomination and I'll support the strategic direction set by the delegates in nominating their presidential candidate. And if, if Justin Amash decided to, to do that, I would, Justin, I would love to have you for a running mate. The question is, do you have the ethics? Do you have the guts? Do you have the principles? Do you have the leadership skills that you say that you have to say that the federal government of the United States of America is an unlawful institution that America would be better off without? We shall see.